welcome to Toffee TV. This is the final word. It is quite a, quite a late final word. It's, very, it's the very, very final word on Everton <laughs> 1, Crystal Palace 1. That game seems so long ago, Baz. Friday night football. Not a fan. Nah. Nah. New fads. Although, I imagine this is, we're not going to, this is, when Monday night football starts, yeah, it'll never last. It'll never last. I think we'll get to a point where it'll be like every game will be on at a separate time and every game will be on telly. It's where we're going, it's where we're heading, sadly. Never mind. Um, yeah, so I mean, Crystal Palace won Everton won. Lots of. Lots of different. Lots of different um, moods coming out of this game. Um, I mean, what, you know. You know what, what, what was your mood coming out of it and has it changed since since the weekend, since the game? Um, yeah, I was disappointed. To come out, mm. not not booing, disappointed. But I was disappointed because, yeah. like I've said many times over, I expect us to win every home game. And this, yeah. for me, was a game that I felt we had to win because mm. we'd had a couple of poor results going into it. But I also knew it was a game that was, was going to be tough because they're a big physical side. Yeah. Um, and, and since it, I've probably looked and seen other results and thought, well, it's an extra point on... You know, we, we keep going, don't we? We mm. move forward. Still disappointed we never won yeah. it, but that's the way it is, isn't it? Yeah, the table coming out of the of the weekend, um, you know, we're fifth place, aren't we? We're not, we're not in the worst place in the world. Fourteen points out of seven games. You know, that's that's not that's not bad. Um, if you keep that up, mate, we'll be more than happy. Exactly, yeah. You know, two points, two a, points game. a game. You're gonna, you seventy six points. You know, mate. We're gonna do all right. Mm. I don't think we're gonna we're gonna quite hit that <laughs> mark, but we're gonna, you know, that's 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 good and. We're going to come into a tougher spell now. Obviously, we all know that. But then, as we've always said, this is—it's a progression, and you, you, you're seeing what's happening. And um, for me, I, you know, I was—I was. I, was I think my, my overriding feeling was I was relieved because I thought second half they they did really well. But I thought I thought we rode it, and I thought I think that's the most encouraging thing. That again, you look at positive, trying to trying to take positives out of the game. Because that's all I'm trying to do at the moment. I think the positives are is that we, you know, we rode out a pretty difficult storm in, in in the early part of the second half. Okay, we some people say we got lucky with the offside goal, but we defended. I thought really well, really courageously. Ashley Williams, Phil Jagielka, just you know, ev getting in the way of everything, you know, putting the foot through everything, and you know, from that point of view, it was a different challenge than we faced at home so far. You know, a different way of a, a, a team playing a different way, a, a team bombarding us with with really effective balls into the box and having really effective men on the end of it. So, yeah, I'm disappointed that we didn't win the game, but at the same time, you look at how how the game progressed, and I thought I just I, th I suppose I'm happy with the point. Yeah, it's it's it's, a, it's easy to to come out and look at. I've heard a lot of negative people, you know, a lot of negative comments, and it's very easy to come out of a game and go oh, we were crap there when the opposition has done well sometimes you've got to come out and go they actually play quite well second half mm. you know but saying that Stecklenberg didn't have much to do no, he, no. He, don't get me wrong coming on a good punch yeah. he made a good save from Tompkins all over that they gone in had they been it was yeah. almost like they identified diving to his left oh, as an issue they identified because a the, lot of things second three, half you know but on the whole you know, I think when you think back over the game, and you you said something off off air about the stats, and I hadn't looked at the stats for the game, which is a bit mad. Stats for the back. game, I think we had we both had two shots on target. We had more shots though. We had more possession. We had more corners. We had more tackles. Uh, we 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 were head on everything. I'm amazed we had more corners because there was a stage in the yeah. second half where they got about we had two more six corners. corners on so the actually, run. I think the. We, we should be disappointed that we didn't make more from maybe the corners, more from the position, more from mm. the shots. There's a lot of misleading things about this game. Um, you know, Ross Barkley, you know, he his position changed in the game. Um, something happened which I, we spoke about last week, and I was talking about Tom Cleverley last week, and I was saying some games you have to have a flat midfield maybe and let your attacking players do what they do and just try and... Try and um, win the midfield battle and then let the attack and plays and it was a little bit like that in this game we had Tom Cleverley in there Ross Barkley in more advanced position to to try and get the best out of him and not and not for him not to have to worry so much about his defensive responsibilities and and in the whole 
it worked because he but he for Ross, yeah. He created was it eight chances in the first half? I think it's the most seven. he's ever, was it seven, sorry. Mm -hmm. It's the most he's ever created in a half. So from his point of view, he'll look at that and say, um, I've done my job, other people maybe haven't done their job. But I then I seen the stats saying a five of them were from free kicks and mm -hmm. something else. Mm -hmm. So you weren't can't. it's stats, isn't it? It's you can make okay. a stat anyway. Maybe you should put up my tea. Sorry, you can make a stat anywhere you're there, anywhere yeah. you want. I, I thought he started off really well, Ross. Yeah. I thought he had a very good first half, and I thought he tailed off second half. I thought cleverly started off okay, and got, got, another stat. And got worse and worse and worse. I've got another stat, though, but cleverly. Best passer on the pitch for us. Yeah, it, well, it, it is. It's very difficult to mess a pass from me to you. Well, cause that's I'm just does. saying, he, he was the best passer on the pitch in mm. the game. Yeah. Um, most, most passes are most... Most um, percent, most of the percentages. Yeah. Now, fit, I understand what you're saying, mm. but maybe, maybe, so, what have we been saying in the last few games about Ross Barkley giving away the ball? No, I know. It's, it's what it's, do we say about Gareth Barry? It's difficult. It's it's it's, it's like it's again. It's a game where you're looking back and you're going, yeah, that's a bit. Mm. That doesn't quite tie in with what my eyes were telling yeah. me. My eyes were telling me he started off quite busy. Mm got on the ball and as the game went on he was less and less and less effective do you think that was less and less effective because um, tiredness fatigue not, not possibly because he hasn't played yeah, a lot yeah, possibly it but it was crying out for Tom Davis and which I was amazed he didn't then, that's, then if, if that's the case but that's not Cleverly's fault is it then that's the manager's I, fault listen He's, I don't think he's ever going to win me over now. No, I, I, he's not a player that I don't like, yeah. and I go, but I just think he's very limited think, in what he does. I think what he is is, and I think this was um, very clear on Friday night is, if you're going to be that size, you've got to be very good, mm. and I don't think I don't think he's he's very good. Mm. I think you you look at their size. He's decent. No, no, but, I like I like Tom. I think yeah, everyone no. knows I like Tom Cleverly, yeah. but I, but he's not. He's not he's not good enough to dominate midfield because he's not physical enough. I mean, you looked at not their quick enough you looked at well, yeah, yeah. You look at Crystal Palace a team; they were all huge. Yeah. They they knew he's he's built a team there, and maybe that's what maybe that's what um, what Cumin's trying to build. Because what Martinez did is he built a team of uh, he built quite a small team. They were no, they weren't good enough. You can build small teams. But they've got to be very, very good. Fast. They've got to be fast and they've got to be good, and you know you, you can do that. But you can't build a small squad. I mean, height wise, to... and and them not all be really, really technically good football. It just can't happen because they've got bullied out of games. Like and and I think the second half in this game, we've seen we've seen a little bit of that. We've seen we've seen a little bit of them bullying us. But fit, I mean, first half, I thought it was quite an evenly matched game. I, I always felt like it was always going to be the. The deadlock was always going to be broken through something sublime or something really stupid, like off the back of someone's ass. Do you know what I mean? And it was it, it did come to the case where you know it took a really fantastic free kick from from Romelu to break it. Yeah, I, I mean, I thought we were. I personally thought we were in control. They they were no threat really. Zaha, I thought Oviedo was excellent in yeah. the first half. He done really well up against Zaha. Got a stupid booking, kicking out ridiculously. Got himself booked and it. It stopped them being able to get as tight as a hard as he probably would have liked. I thought they carried very little threat in the first half. I thought Everton nullified them. Uh, we were always on the front foot. We missed chances. You know, we scored a great free kick from Lukaku. Um, and I always felt he was going to score, to be honest, when he was lined up. I don't know why, because he's never took one and never looked capable of doing that. But um, the disappointing thing from, from that is after that, we didn't get the second goal because we had opportunities and, and they were either wasted or they were shot straight at the keeper or we didn't hit the target when we should have done we had a lot of corners mm. and so we went in one nil up haven't played quite well they were they were still in the game of course they were because at one you'd always are but i just felt as though the next goal was was vital yeah, i think yeah. they got two up it'd have been good night and um, to be fair but we've we've always given them a lot of stick pardew you but he, he changed it and he changed mm. it you know he changed it well i mean he didn't do nothing revolutionary he just started telling their play to diagonal balls to the, against our full backs and it worked yeah. you know it worked really well he just started bypassing the midfield maybe that's why maybe that's why the likes of cleverly and the likes of ross barker less of an effect in the second second half because they just started bypassing us and hitting us and um 
it worked. I mean, because I mean, we made we made a couple of subtle changes more after they got the goal. But I was really disappointed with the goal because I just thought, I, I, Seamus Coleman has has not really impressed me since he came back no. from his injury Absolutely. at all. I think he's been defensively very hesitant. He hasn't offered enough forward. I know he scored a good goal against Middlesbrough, but he hasn't offered enough quality going forward. And he just seems very he seems very hesitant in defence. Um whether that I don't I don't know. Whether that's always been there and I'm just more late to the party catching on, I don't know. But for this goal, it annoyed me. And I know you can say, Oh well, you know, look at the size of Ben Teke to look at the size of him. Look at what Ben Teke does to him. Ben Teke jumps. And gets so much height and uses he uses, uses him, him to steer himself to steer the ball, and it annoyed me because if the ball's coming into the box, Seamus shouldn't be standing there going, "Yeah, mm. he should be for me." He should know he's there for a start. He doesn't know he's there, does he? Doesn't he? Ever know he anyone's behind? Him. No, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's always been a problem with him. He's, I think he might Massive be. Problem either blind in one eye or having an inner ear problem or something I don't know he never seems to know that there's anyone behind him ever and no one ever tells him there's anyone so that's, no. that's another little fault um, but he's got no idea Ben Teche's there and it's almost like he's just sort of waiting for that ball to just go out over his head number, number one someone should be giving him a call but number two with all his experience because he's an experienced player now he's the Irish captain for God's sake he's captain does 28 you know he's been to he's been to you know he's been to the Euro had the decent Euros and all that he should just be thinking right I'm going to get up early and I'm going to make sure I get something on this because if there is someone behind me that stops them Jack Elka showed later on what you do with Ben Teche you get up and you give him a little dig in the, in the, in the ribs and you just stop him but all this, all it, listen, it's a magnificent header. But it's a magnificent header because he's allowed to just get up, pin Seamus Coleman, and just steer it into the corner. Seamus, with all his experience, should just be getting up early. Get, you know, look at Tim Cale. How big's Tim Cale? You know how he he was a magnificent head of the ball because he used to get up early. You know, yeah, and be able to. Seamus needs to just. He he should be getting up early for that for me. Well, it, the goal was, it, there was a few faults with the goal, mm. wasn't it? The first is we get half a tackle in on the ball on yeah. the edge of our box. Gareth Barry should do a little bit better. Him or Oviedo should be out quickly to charge the cross down. They didn't. They allow Ward, I think it is, on his left foot mm. to just stand it up. But as that ball's coming in, there's only one man in the box and he's the danger man. So Everton are either zonally marking. Well, to be fair, Ben Teke, that, that's what he did start to do, and Andy, he yeah. started targeting Seamus Coleman. So what Coleman. you do? Don't, when the ball, if you if you stop the thing, which I I done it on Saturday, stop the ball when it was in midair, and we've got essentially we've got a decent shape. Mm. We've got four defenders in a line across, mm. which is okay. So what happens? What has to happen is you go man for man on the only danger they've got in the box, which is Ben Teke. So either Jack Yelke goes over or yeah. Coleman, one of them gets touched tight to Ben Teke. And don't give him the free jump. It doesn't happen. Coleman doesn't know he's there. Because all Seamus has to do is forget the ball. Mm -hmm. You just look at where it's coming. You know that ball he's was. It wasn't fisting. It was no, floated. It floated. Right? So as it's floated, he should be looking at you. And as it's there, he should just jump. And just jump into Ben Teke. Yeah. So they're coming together. So he hasn't got a clean header. But even, yeah, because even if he headers it. Yeah, it's not. A, it's it's from where he is. Yeah. If, if he heads it and Seamus is giving him a little nudge. It's, then it's going to go out for exactly. a goal kick. Or, it's, it? or he's just going to knock it down and we can get it. And he doesn't. He allows. And he's good in the air, Ben yeah. Teke. That's why I wanted us to buy him. Because he gives you that threat. I thought he was magnificent pulling the ball down and laying it off. But it was just so annoying. Because it was like. That was their most basic way to score a goal, and we didn't deal with it, and that's frustrating for yeah. me. He should have done much, much better. And I thought, and I've got to say this because I said it on the night, I thought the keeper could have done better. And watched it again. I did. I did. I watched it again, and I thought, at the time, I thought, how's he just let that in? Mm. What? And I was thinking, maybe it just fizzed past him and he didn't get near it. I think when I watched it again, he thinks it's going wide, mm. and it curls back in because he, he takes a step, and I think if he dives, he may get something yeah. on it. I just think he acted a bit slow, but I, I still think the. Problem, I think it's a poor goal. I think the problems a, with Coleman. Really. Yeah, I, I think it's a really poor goal mm. to concede. And some you get uh, 
uh, you get all these, or oh, how can you stop? Of course you can stop it. You can stop it before it gets into the box, and then you can stop it in. It's old school defending. You just, I know, I know. There's all this nonsense going about about you know. I mean, it's not, it's not nonsense, but you know, pulling the shit. Don't have to pull the shit. You're still allowed to go shoulder to shoulder. Jack Elke, five minutes after it or whatever, the ball went up and he just jumped into Ben Seca while the ball was there. Yeah. Ben Seca went down like yeah. he'd been shot at the referee. Get not number it because you're jumping into them to stop them getting a clean header. You have to win it. Coleman's never going to win it. Ben Sech is massive. Crack. He's not going to win the ball unless he's Kyle, <laughs> who, who can jump, you know, or, yeah. or a big centre half. But he can stop him getting something on it. I just felt, I felt if if, they, if we're going to maintain our shape like that against big players, we've got a problem because Ronald Koeman, I'm sure he'll do it anyway, but one of our centre-backs needs to identify there's one threat there, so I'm going to go man-to-man -man with him. And if you're the centre-forward and I'm marking you and you go wide, I'll go there, Coleman can drop in. There was one man in the box. But I'd expect Seamus Coleman to deal with well, that. Well, he though. should really. I'd, 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 where it was, I'd expect the full-back to be able to deal just with just that. Just jump into him. Yeah. That's it. Just jump into him. I mean, it's... I, I'm like you. I People have, on the, the ratings and stuff or on the aftermaths, a couple of people have said, oh... Do you not like Coleman? I do really like Seamus Coleman, but I'm not one of these Evertonians that goes, he's got to play every single week. If he's not played, like Ross Barkley, even though I've been, I've championed Ross this season, and I thought he'd done okay the other night. I said before the other night, he didn't, he didn't deserve to play. I don't think he'd done enough the last couple to deserve to play. Coleman shouldn't have been back in that side. Mason Holgate hadn't put a foot wrong. Really, for me, he did day one against Lamella. He should have known he was there, and he didn't. He got done after that. The kid matured, and I think height wise and everything, I think he should be back in. I think Seamus needs a little bit of a, a tap up. And I, I actually think, well, I mean, he's young and he's inexperienced, so he mightn't have been able to deal with that. He's but at the point. same time, he's been, he's been, he started his career as a centre half, so he might know that. But I, it just annoys me that how, it just annoys me that people honestly think that. It like was that it was unstoppable. Mm. It's not unstoppable at all. You know, you play. You if you play at any kind of level of football, you know. The, I'll, I'll give you the simplest form of it. When someone knocks a ball down the wing, and the defender gets in front of the gets in front of the of the striker and just sh just puts his body in the way, he shepherds it out for mm. a goal kick. And then loads of people for years have gone, "Oh, that's a you hate that, don't yeah. you?" As a striker, and everyone yeah. goes, "Oh, that's that's obstruction." It's like, it's not. It's part of football, and it'll always be part of football. Mm. And it's the same with that. If two if a defend what 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 the way you look at it is, how much look at look at look at Ben Teke. He's hitting Sheamus. So what's the difference if Seamus hits Ben Teke? Yeah. You know, what's the, the they're both going for the ball. They're both hitting each other. You wouldn't say Ben Teke fouled Seamus Coleman there, would you? Because he just contact. Yeah. He uses him brilliantly. He could have put his hand on his collar and steered him. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's, he uses him so well. But if it had been the other way, no one would have said, oh, that's a foul, because it wouldn't be a foul. And that's what Seamus should be doing. I, if Seamus is awake, he'll go, there's someone behind me, he's bigger than me, hit him, just mm -hmm. hit him, just hit him. And, and make sure that when that ball hits his head, it's not in the place where it, he wants to go. Mm. If it somehow magically goes in, it somehow magically goes in. But you know as a defender, you've done your job. Yeah. It's as simple as that. I I mean, look at the size of me. I used to win a few headers as a centre-forward. Most centre-backs were the size of you, by the way. So I'd have to either jump early yeah. before they got... But if it didn't win it, I would always jump in shoulder to yeah. shoulder so that he didn't get a clear. If I if I leave you to just edit, you can put it where you yeah. want. But if I jump into you, you're thinking, I've got you've got to have your eye on me. Mm -hmm. Is it and you mightn't get the clean header and it might drop. That's all he had to do. He doesn't have to win it. Jump into him and you just make it difficult. The other thing about it is as well, and you'll know this, and it used to drive me mental being when I played, was if a little fella gets in front of you and he's clever, he'll just go, oh. And fall over, and you get you get the, get foul, the foul all the time. And if Seamus had just got in front of him there, and just just even looked like he was jumping and hit the deck, he would have got a foul. Jack Elka does it, doesn't he? Yeah. Sometimes all, he just throws himself forward. All defenders defenders have learned in the last three or four years that all they need to. You see it all the time when again when a defender is, a ball comes down the channel, a defender runs out to it, the, the winger comes down, the winger puts a little touch on him, and the centre back throws himself down. Mm. And it's always oh. a foul now. It's all. It's not a I mean, foul. John, I mean, it's debatable whether John Moss would give a free kick. But I just think if he jumps into it, if he jumps into it and Ben Saki doesn't get the free header, and, and it's just, dealt with well, him. Well, uh, that's 1-1. One, one. But Seamus, just before we go on, he's but, always had that problem. Oh, no, yes, yes. You know, remember uh, United away last year, I think, when we got beat 1-0. Anthony Marshall come in and he, 
he tried to help, but I create I no idea. And he scored. He's this is where for years and fallen and away. This is when this is when they say Baines. He, when people say Baines, he's a bad defender. Ba- you know what? Baines never lets that happen. No. Be- and it, th- all right, you might have let sometimes happen because I know people go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you watch him out of time. Baines is like he's that, always like that, head on a swivel. And soon as he, soon as he feels it, he's down, and he always gets. The, he all, that's that's what you've got to do as a fullback now. But um, you know, they one one. It sort of takes the air out the place. But then we get the next chance. You know, good work by Balassi down the left. Pulls it back and guy. You've got to. You've got to be. You, I know it's not three, three to five, but <laughs> you've got to be better than that. Yeah, he's got. To you've got to put that anywhere but on the body of the player in front of you. I know that's not your, necessarily your your job, but you've got to be scoring that. You've got to be getting it back up into the game like that. Started off as number ten. Number ten scored him. Got he should have scored. That he. he, he and on another day, it might have hit Joel Wood, it was it Joel Wood up the lane, he might have hit one of them and spun him, but he's got it, he's six, seven yards out, he's just got to blast it, put his foot right through it, and we'd have gone 2-1 up, and we'd have probably took yeah. the game away from them, because the crowd would have been bouncing again. Goodison was strangely quiet, mm. for, a, for a night game, I thought it'd be absolutely yeah. booming for a Friday night, even, even had Friday night from the X-Factor there, apparently, didn't work. But uh, no, it was a, uh, it was... That was a big moment in the game, and then a few minutes later. Well, that's it. They 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 knew. Listen, they were getting joy. They were getting plenty of joy with what they were doing. I mean, they got the goal. I mean, Oviedo ended up going off because of the way they were. They, were, they knew what they were doing. They were being stronger in the midfield. They, they basically outswung the midfield. And they were just didn't know diagonals. It was working mm-hmm. all the time. You know, they get loads of freak, uh, loads of corners. So they get that corner. It comes in. It's back into the box, um, and it's headed in. And I'm think well. First one thing, I'm typical. Because I'm thinking, you know, because they were all over us. They sort of did. If they'd gone two one up ahead, it wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been a disjustice really at that point. Mm. The way they started the second half, but uh, lo and behold, the, the linesman's flag came up, and uh, too much controversy. And I I looked when he added it in. I looked at the linesman. He had the flag mm. up straight away. So I knew he, it wasn't given. And then, of course, we brought bowl the ball up, and Barkley is in there half oh, racing yeah, through. Yeah. With three three against two, we had to think running through on the goal. And Moss, little fat John Moss, you know, in his wisdom, mm. brings it back. Once he jogged over to oh, the lines, I thought he's just gonna overrule yeah, him. Yeah, you know, yeah. and point, and I was expecting him to point to the half. Yeah, well, I, was, he, I mean, after seeing it I get, again, he's obviously gone over and said, What have you bought it for? for yeah. Um, and the decision was, was the correct decision. Well, to be decision, fair, it is, the, it, it is the right decision because that's the rule now. You know, if you cross if you cross the path and, and make um, make any gesture to, to, to score, then you're offside. Mm. That's the rule now. Well, there's no arguments. You know, whether we like it or not, that's the rule now. But it should be because it, it's... Well, after, from the first angle I saw it, because I was watching, I thought it was offside. I thought the fella who headed it was offside, so I'm watching for mm. the first angle. And he runs back in and thinking, he's miles onside. Because he was, the lane, he was onside. Yeah. When I seen it again and I seen MacArthur run across, mm. there's not even a yeah. question. Because he runs right across Stecklenburg, he tries to head it, he can't. Yeah. So which means Stecklenburg can't dive until that ball's past MacArthur. Because he's trying to affect the he ball. Was, he was already diving, but well, forget about that. Well, he just, he just looked. But that's not the right thing. That's that's yeah, Nobody can, what I'm saying, if MacArthur's not there, he can make a clean yeah, go for it. True. He can't, because MacArthur might direct it. Then it's gone. So it was the correct decision. You know, By the letter of law, it was the correct decision, so you can't argue about it. Um, yeah, I, as I say, we rolled, that part, we rolled that patch of the game, didn't we? But for the last 10 minutes I actually thought he was only going to you know I thought you know you looked at the last 10 minutes we were getting corners mm. uh, Gareth Barry's had the header you know off the off line, the line um, and, 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 and to be fair last sort of 10 minutes even though it was nearly because you you still felt like that you still felt like they carried the threat didn't they they had one trick but the trick was working yeah. so let's let's be honest it was working it's why he brought um, Foon's Mori on as well to get a yeah. little bit more height and stop height. it yeah. stop it going that way but it was working um but we we did we did we did rally late on. It was just I don't know. It was just I think they with ten minutes ago they seem to be happy with the point. The subs thoughts. Uh, agree with taking Barkley off. Yeah, I think he I think he fizzled out. Mm. I think he fizzled out. He fizzle. um, but I don't necessarily think Ross had a terrible game. I just think no, he no. Fizzled, fizzled out. Um, I just thought we were cra- the vi- 
the Valencia thing surprised me, the fact he didn't put Valencia. Because he put Morales on for Barfi, mm. and I don't think Kev touched the ball. No. He took a corner, he, did, he was totally ineffective. So all of that, he can play in the 10. Mm, it's up for the bit. No, well, what I mean is other people no. have been saying that. You put someone in there and they don't like that. I'd people have gone, no, he can't play that. I'd like to have seen Tom Davies. But come. Tom Davies, for me, for cleverly, I think would have given us a little bit of snide, a little bit yeah. of power. Because he, he, the kid. Maybe he just thought. Or maybe he just thought the he way. Probably just thought it was they, he, they were lost in the midfield. It was evenly but it, it is weird that you know we have Valencia on the bench and he hasn't brought him on. That's a strange one for me. I mean, is he? Do we think he's already made his mind up of Valencia, or did, or or are we just thinking that wasn't his type of game? And and as maybe Palace were 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 just too physical for us. I, see, I think. You know, brought Funes Mori on for Oviedo, correct decision, because mm. we needed that extra bit of height. And Oviedo faded as well. He, I thought he was very good. Probably well, Oviedo. He did play well, but he, second half, yeah. they got more and more joy, and that's why he went off. Um, Barkley, yeah, I can't nearly complain when he put his number up, although I'd have probably took cleverly off first. But couldn't nearly complain at that. Aaron Lennon might have been a mm. shout for just that Possibly, little, yeah. the last 10, just a little bit of pace, yeah. a little bit of zippiness. I just thought I just but with the Valencia thing, he could I thought he could have put him on and played them wide because he generally runs wide anyway, mm. doesn't he? And I thought that might have helped. But you just look and think he brought him in as and a striker, and we're one yeah. one. Does he has he gone? He doesn't really offer us anything. Or does he just think the shape's quite nice with Balassi yeah. alongside Lukaku and Balassi might still because he faded, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. For, he started off like he might. He, he was. I think thing about Balassi in this game was. It, can't shoot, can he? Can't shoot. <laughs> not, uh, no, no one's having any any discussions about the shoot. No, but the no. thing about Balassi is, is that, like we've said in the last, keep it simple. I said, I said, that, what did I say day one when we signed him? Those tricks are going to really wind me up if he does them at the wrong times, and he, he he does do them at the wrong time. He's got pace to burn. He can walk past people. With some nice crosses, you know. Him, but he does put go. go I, I, funny enough, I, I met a Crystal Palace fan on on a Saturday, and he's just like. When the Barsi learned to cross, mm. he's basically said he never, you know, he never did that for us. Um, he was in and out the game. It was interesting when he sort of he tried him like up front, didn't yeah, he? Yeah. He tried him up I front. Thought it worked quite well, but on. the problem was. But then we had not. We had nothing on wide, and you can see. For me, I think you can see what Kuman wants. He wants a big, strong side all over the pitch. Yeah, he wants. And it's something I said in a, in a video yesterday. You know, if you, if you. If you're big and you're strong and you're strong, you're gonna you should be able to, you know, have more fit fitness, you know what I mean? It, as the game goes on. You know, you, you look at someone like Cleverly, if he's going into challenges with 70, 70 75 minutes against someone, he's gonna be losing them. The the bigger fella's always gonna have it, isn't he? So I think we know what we need squad wise, we need bigger, stronger players. You look at the bench, there's not many of that type about. They're all on the pitch pretty much. That's why he wanted to show go, wasn't he? Whether, yeah. you, whether you think anything of him, but he's a big, strong, powerful mm. lad, isn't he? Whether you know But I think that's I think that's what people have got to realise. Oh, you know, dickheads booing and I know some people are like, oh do we booing the ref they weren't. People booed and then others booed the ref. People were booing like like honestly I just I don't get that mentality at this stage of you know it's very early on. Kuman, you can tell, is taking bits out of every game. He's gone, well, you know, I, I need to see... Right, cleverly played all right for 20 minutes last week, so I need to see what he does in the team. You know, I need to see this, I need to see that. And, you know, I need to look at different aspects, and then I'll learn from that. He's not gonna. He's not going to know how players really are from a pre-season. He needs to see them on the pitch. You know, and... I, I, don't, I just don't get this mentality of, like, oh, they're rubbish. They're not rubbish at all. They've, they've been... There's, Crystal Palace come out second half with a tactic, and it's, it's, it's undone us. And we really didn't have anything to counter that tactic. What were we going to do? All right, someone, maybe you could say, well, you could take Coleman off, and maybe put Jags at right back and bring Foons Mario. But then you're sort of upset. Do you know what I mean? But then you're... Like that. Yeah, no, but what I mean is then you're upsetting yeah. the whole team, aren't you? I think... We've got to remember where we are. That I think people are still assuming and, and that it's still Mart. It's like as if Martinez is still in charge. I've seen people going, we've been crapping every game. We could have won the game. Garner could have scored, should have scored. Gareth Barry could have scored with a flick header. We could have, yeah, we could have lost it, of course, we could, but we could have won it. I mean, they've been sat here in second yeah. place or third place going, what a season we're having. We're right in the middle. We've lost one game in seven. You know, we've got plus six goal difference. 
you know, we, we were miles better than we were last year in terms of fitness and in terms of yeah. being able to compete. And having an idea. We lost eight home games last year. I know, but, but we have, we've got, look at that back, look at that defence. That defence now knows what its job is. Look at Williams and look at Jack Yelke. They know what they're doing, don't they? They know what they're doing. Don't you do? They don't, right. Yeah, but that, that's it, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. He, you he, put Baines in there and you put, for now, Holgate in there. Let James have a little blow and get his. He needs to realise that his place isn't secure. You've got a good back five. The keeper's been steady. You've got a good defence there. You've got Garner. Gareth Barry's quite clearly still not fully fit, but he was a lot better Friday. You know, you've got Balassi to carry the pace. There's big upgrades there. Mm. Yes, we still need players. We know we do. But he's not a miracle worker. He's not a miracle the, the, worker. The big fault is we didn't buy more players. We said that. That mm. was our. That's that. That will. That will keep sort of. Rearing its head centre forward till January. Of course horrendous. it will. Um, but you've got to also remember he was, you know, not only is a new manager, but there's an overhaul of the system mm. in the summer. You know, and they've changed the way they're doing things. And you're hearing little positive things coming out now from Steve Walsh, some of plays he's after or plays he's bought, and his role at the club. You know, he's not hands on with the first team. His job is to basically run the recruitment and mm. it's quite clear as well that for me it's been quite clear that Ronald Koeman's job is just to be the first team coach yeah he doesn't he's happy with really that. care about anything else he's not interested in the long-term development of anything at the club you know because I don't think he'll be here in two years that's just my opinion but I certainly don't think he'll be in three years he is right for he is the first team coach and, it, and Steve Walsh does all the recruitment so he'll say go and get me a Go and get me uh, whatever. So on the last day, of the se- last day of the transfer window, it was very clear. He went, I need a centre forward. A centre forward, and they've rung round, and the last one in the shop was Valencia. Unfortunately, that's just the way things are, isn't it? That will get better, of course. It will. He's already said, hasn't he? Yeah. He's looking at. He wants. A, there's a couple of players he needs to speak to. I still think he wants the kid from Leon. He wants Gazelle. He sc- who scored yesterday. Uh, <laughs> I still think he wants him, and obviously, it's clear he wants another centre forward. But there'll be. They'll be now establishing what they need to bring into this side. And like you were saying before about players, I couldn't I don't I couldn't care less. When people go, oh, but this'll happen. I couldn't give them monkeys. If if Ross Barkley's not playing because we've got a superior player than him, so be it. Yeah, yeah. If if you know someone else do I, I, I don't I don't I know. love Delafay, but at the moment he doesn't deserve yeah. to play. It it's does, not a chance he deserves it to does play. other play I, I love Seamus Coleman, I think he's one of the I think his story's fantastic. I love I he's love a great fella, he's a I love everything. Yeah. That I, I love the fact that he's an Evertonian and where he's come from and what he does and you know, how he looks after people and all the rest of it. But if there's a better right back out there, I'll take the better right back. Do you know mm. what I mean? That's that's life. This is what I'm saying now. It, I love him and I want him to get back to it because he got in some good positions in the first half and like, didn't do anything with any ball he got in. Poor decision, poor choices. He'd done it near the end. He got in round the back, slid them in. He couldn't find There was four men in the box. He mm-hmm. managed to miss every single one of them. For me, at the moment, he doesn't deserve to be playing because our players, when I do those player ratings, the least I should ever give a player is seven and a half because that means we're playing really well. Yeah. For me, he's been a, around the six all season, yeah. whereas Holgate was seven and a half to eight because he was doing his job. Yeah. If but if Luca, Rom said it in the interview with Terry Henry, and I thought, I thought, I can't half me went, that's bosh. That the other half went, yeah, but it's at the moment it's still a bit of a a mis, you know, what did a, he say? A misconception. He said to Henry, <laughs> I've got to get better because with it, he basically said. I could do whatever I wanted. Mm. I could just lay in the canteen like that with me bills on my mind. This was there playing FIFA, right? Yeah. Which he must Probably have had did. a big bill. I, well, he, I think he did. But um, he said, "With this fella, if I don't play well, I know that I'm going to be on the bench." That's not going right? to happen. But the fact, no. But the fact <laughs> that he act, no, but that's what I'm saying. But the fact that he actually said it mm. means that Cumin yeah. has already. Well, this, I love the celebration. I love the fact that he went over to Cumin. Mm. There was like, like. That was the first sign you've seen that he actually does a little bit of a bomb. Yeah, but no, he'd been doing he free kicks with good. him, hadn't he, apparently? No, I know, but he, he, no, the fact that. he ran over yeah, to Yeah, but no, but as I say, it's... For me, at the moment, it's about keeping doing what we're doing. And we've got tough, we've got tougher games coming. Of course we have, 
but that they're learning from that. They're learning, all, they're learning, they're establishing all the time where the weaknesses, where we need to improve. He's not just sitting here going, oh, this was good. Because I know people have a little go, oh, first few games, you're dead honest. And now he's, uh, now he's been a little bit more selective about what he says. Well, maybe maybe because he's, what's the point in going every game? You were crap, you were crap, you were crap, you were crap. It's the same as here, and you were great, they were great, they were great, they were but great. Where the crap at the point? You just, it, you just bounced the stats out. No, no. If you looked at it again and watched it objectively, sometimes what we see as fans and what yeah, what, of course. what they see and what they've been working on, yeah. he might have worked on a plan all week, and, and for 70, 80 percent of the game, it yeah, might yeah. have worked, yeah. and it was only for that twenty percent that has let us down. Now we'll go and go, well, it, 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 it's work for what I've got to work yeah. with. Right after Middlesbrough, I didn't think we played very well. I don't think we played that. all well all season. No. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's people the... come bouncing out after Middlesbrough, right? And I heard. Uh, we were in total control, great performance. But like I thought we were bo- I thought it was boring. I thought second half was scary because we looked clueless. We won the game three one. I come out Friday and thought they were a good we played quite well. That was a good game, because they were good at times yeah, yeah. as well. I felt totally different. We won the butter game. I take the butter win every time, yeah. don't get me wrong, but performance wise, I thought we were better against Palace than we were against. I thought Palace. against Bournemouth and uh, I thought against uh but in the second half. We just took our foot off the pedal second half, and, and but, we, but we still should be eight. No, I know, but it was almost like you know. Well, it was. We were three one up, so come and yeah. see what you've got. But what I, the day that I'm totally convinced by Everton will be the day that we can cut teams of Oakland exactly. at will, and we can't do it at the moment. I don't think we've played so, well for a whole game yet, and I think oh, most people agree. Game. I think we play well in spells like Sunderland. It's, it's it's how we play in those spells. At the moment, that matters. It's it's how many goals you scored in those Second spells. Goal exactly, is imperative. It, and and I think if we can get you know into a game and take a lead, then I think we, I think other teams will find it very hard to score that that goal ahead goal against still, us. We we start slow and we we've been given that first goal away stupidly. But I, ironically, I thought we started very quickly mm-hmm. Friday night. I thought we had them on the back foot <coughs> early on. The the big thing. If you worried, you know, people are sat there going, "Yeah, but nothing's really improved." We've only conceded one goal in each in the games we've conceded. It's one goal a game last year. It was three. Just go back to last year. Every game was three. Every game was three. And we're in our what we played. How many seven did? games. So we played seven Premier League games. You can see the and four goals. That's the goals. difference already. We that's conceded the difference. four goals. But there you go. And that's the difference already. And we're building it from the back. Mm, and I say it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a. It's it's a it's a work in progress. It's not. I don't even feel like it's like properly started well, yet. If if any, if we're gonna struggle anywhere, it'll be we haven't got enough goals in the team mm. because if we if Rom isn't scoring, who else is? No, nope. Barkley's not scoring at the moment. Morales is not doesn't do enough because he's not a bit balassi hasn't scored and, and doesn't look. That's the worry, team. isn't it? That's where the fear. That's is. the real fear is that we you know we don't look like we've got goals in us. The day we start getting goals around the team and you can rely on four or five players to get you the goal from nowhere will be the day that Everton do very very well and that's what he's got to build towards it's not going to be done definitely in one win definitely so that's it that's the final word it wasn't as bad as you thought was it see people coming out looking to commit Harry Carry and all kinds we've got, four, we've got 14 points if, if we've got 28 points after 14 games we'll have done alright yeah there you go won't we we're not we're not doing too badly. That's what people have got to remember that. Get off the ledge. Step back into the house. Bobby's gone. It's alright. He's gone. We move on. Yeah. So tell us what you think in the comments. You've already told us loads. We've already done a your comments video, so check out there if you've already, you know, you're on there. But uh, tell us your thoughts on this game and uh, where where we need to improve. Because it's clear we do need improvements, but they're not gonna happen overnight. If you've got any names. Who do you want? Who's catching your eye in the French fourth division or something? Because that's where Steve Walsh looks, or you know, Serie Serie X or something. I don't know. I'm just making things up now. Uh, tell us in the comments. I'll let you. Um, yeah, and uh, no games now for like two weeks. So, uh, well, this for me because I'm going to Holland versus France next week at the Amsterdam Arena. Happy days, Scotland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, me and the Stech. See you later. <laughs>